Hello all, my name is Heidi. I'm a postdoc at the University of Oulu. I'm here to present to you a paper I wrote together with Afsane and Pamela from University of Central Florida. In the paper, we examine the advice and support adolescents receive from peers online regarding online sexual risks such as sexting and how they respond to this support. Previous research has found that youth often use the internet to seek support and advice on topics like mental health, sexual health and relationships. Online peer support platforms empower them to discuss sensitive topics because they offer accessibility, interactivity and anonymity. We know that concerning online sexual experiences, teens mostly seek support concerning sexting and how to resist pressure to engage when a crush, partner or a friend asks them to. We also know that when teens post about relationship trouble, peers often advise them to terminate problematic relationships rather than to seek help or communicate. More research has been suggested on peer support teens receive online for online sexual experiences with known others, as well as on teen interpretations of social support. To address these research gaps, we set out to answer the following questions. What types of online support do teens receive concerning online sexual experiences with known others? And how does online social support vary based on different online sexual experiences? We also wanted to find out how do teens respond to receiving different kinds of online social support. We licensed a dataset from a peer support platform catering mostly to teens and young adults and gathered posts of 13 to 17 year olds regarding their online sexual experiences with known others, as well as the comment threads under these posts. First, we applied Kutron Ansur's framework of social support to qualitatively analyze 3050 peer comments on the posts to find out what kind of social support teens receive. Then we analyzed 837 teen posts to see how this support varies between scenarios. Lastly, we analyzed 1,451 teen replies to peers under their own posts to understand how teens respond to the support they received. Our results indicate that when adolescents seek help for online sexual interactions involving people they know, Social support is most often given through information support, such as teaching or advice, and through emotional support, such as, such as empathy or sympathy. Peers also gave the teens esteem support, such as encouragement or compliments. Network support, such as offering presence or connecting outside the platform, and tangible assistance through carrying out tasks, were the less common forms of social support in our dataset. Peers often provided information support in posts where teens expressed concern about possible negative outcomes related to online sexual experiences or were already experiencing them. These negative outcomes included such as being pressured, being sextorted or nudes being shared with others than intended. Often peer advice on how to handle the situation was based on their own past negative experiences. Emotional support was often inspected under posts where teens indicated mixed or distressing feelings related to their online sexual experiences, such as sadness, anger, confusion, self-harm or suicidal thoughts. Peers were letting the teens know that they were not alone with their experiences and they shouldn't blame themselves. Esteem support was often seen in posts where teens expressed emotions like sadness or guilt, or if they were feeling bad about their personality or appearance. Network support was seen across scenarios in situations when peers took an interest in the teen or their story and offered presence or companionship also outside of the platform. Tangible assistance was often seen under posts where the teen expressed a concrete negative outcome after engaging. 
In the post, peers hoped they could help or offer to retaliate online or offline against those who were seen as breaking the unwritten rules of online intimacy. The platform we licensed the dataset from was moderated and there were rarely any bully, bullying or name-calling inspected there. However, there were some comments that could be interpreted to be unsupportive or even negative in tone. They were mostly inspected under posts of those teens who were already suffering concrete negative outcomes. In the comments, peers were urging the teens to take some responsibility for their actions, even victim blaming those who they felt broke the common sense norms of safe sexting. In their responses, teens were mostly seen engaging with the peers and expressing gratitude or explaining their situation or mood to get better support. It was less common to return the po to the post to provide updates concerning how the situation evolved since the original post. Generally speaking, teens responded with gratitude to emotional and esteem support, as well as to any concrete advice that helped them navigate difficult situations or relationships. Comments that gave negative feedback about a teen's significant other or a relationship were often taken defensively and advice to end relationships was often rejected. When peers took a neutral tone and told the teen to calm down, talk about their feelings and set healthy boundaries, advice was more readily accepted. Together, our findings suggest that youth are self-organizing to converge on guidelines and norms around safe sexting practices, but they are having trouble framing their support and advice in a way that is readily accepted. We believe that there are many different paths for future work around this important topic. Posts included in our dataset were made by persons who specified their age to be between 13 and 17, and our results are most generalizable to this age group. More research would be warranted concerning the effects on, of social support on different age groups, as their concerns for online sexual experiences might also be different. We noticed that females so sought support more often than male. In general, boys were more engaged in providing support than seeking it. This might be partly because women more often seek support than men, but it might also be partly because of issues such as sexual double standards or slut-shaming. More research could be warranted on gender differences concerning how adolescents seek and receive support on online sexual experiences. Furthermore, digital trace data included in our analysis rarely contained information about the teen's feelings, motivations, thoughts and struggles in relation to the context, context in which the post was made. We also rarely saw updates concerning how the situation changed over time. While analyzing this data provided us a researcher independent glimpse into this topic, other methods are also needed for more focused studies. It would be interesting to combine analysis of digital trace data with follow-up interviews to get a richer picture on the effects of online social support concerning online sexual experiences. Thank you for checking out our video. Please read our paper and send an email if you have any questions or want to talk more. Thank you.